Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is a little bit after 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Sorry, I'm just running super late today. Uh, but it is time for another live stream. I am back from Germany, and I'm so glad to see all you guys. I missed you so much, and I have so much to share with you guys. Uh, well, I put most of it in the video that just came out today. But there's just a lot more that, you know, just never makes it to the end of the video. And so, uh, yeah, plenty to talk about. Plus, I've got like a mountain of packages. And I don't think any of them are Adidas packages. But... Um, but just stuff that arrived while I was gone in just a short amount of time. Like all these packages started to come in here. So lots of stuff to kind of get through today. And I am going to have to cut it a little bit early today because I have a call coming up right after the live stream for today. So we're going to have to pack in a lot for today. But on a quick programming note, we'll have a live stream today and then we'll have a live stream Monday because then on Tuesday, I'm off to Tokyo. So a lot of stuff happening. I'm that much more thankful for the time I have with you guys right now. For everyone listening on the audio only version on the podcast, I'll try to remember and try to explain all the stuff that like I'm kind of opening so that you guys can kind of get in on it too. Uh, and I hope you guys are having a good run. It was really cold here in Crystal Lake. Um, beautiful sunny day, but temperatures are a bit icy. And uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying some warmer weather. And everyone watching this on YouTube later, but not live, welcome to you guys as well. Hopefully, dinner cleanup is going really nice and smoothly today. All right, let's see who we got here in the chat. Runner Wills here says, what's good, everyone? Hope you're having an amazing day. Mike, when you run Berlin, you're going to love it there too. Well, hopefully I do get to run it someday. Uh, Frank says, oh, I got to turn my volume down a little bit. I think I'm really loud in my headphones. Frank says, Nuremberg is actually a really great city to visit if you only have one day, in part because of the nice wall. All the historic stuff, Albrecht, Dürer Museum, etc. It's all close together. Yeah, I mean, everything seemed really nicely packed together. And then I think there, certainly there was a lot of stuff outside the wall too. Um, but I had a really good time in Nuremberg. It's a place that I wish I could have spent clearly a lot more time. But hopefully I'll be back. I think the trip went well. You know, I always say that like, you know, I... Uh, Good work leads to more good work. So hopefully uh, I'll be invited back to Nuremberg again. They were like, uh, yeah, that Roads to Record event this year, it's going to be in April. And I was like, oh, okay. They're like, are you coming back? Like people were like, hey, are you coming back for Roads to Records? And I was like, no. And I'm like, not, not because I don't want to come, but no one has invited me yet. So I did get introduced to like the head of global PR over there. Um, and so I think that's kind of the person that would normally bring me. Although for this trip, it was arranged through a PR company. So like, you know, there's many, many roads to Herzo, I guess, and Nuremberg. So hopefully I get to go back soon. Eliza says, okay, hi, Kovam. It's been a while. Hope all is well. Need to know what's in the boxes and the best food eaten. So I think the best thing that I ate while I was there was the last dinner that I had. Uh, I went out with the Adidas team. And, um, and then there was two people from a European shoe retailer top four running they're based out of the netherlands and they were the other kind of like group that was there apparently megan murray was supposed to come too which i didn't know about that till afterwards and now i'm like oh man that would have been so much even more fun uh if there was someone that i knew that could have come with me as well but um but anyway i went out to dinner with the team and they took us to like this uh what do they call it franconian a franconian restaurant um that's just the region. Uh, so it's like re like regional food. And uh, they had a, 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 a tasting menu and they also had a vegetarian tasting menu too. So that was really nice. So I had like just really nice food there. The first course was, I'm trying to remember. Well, oh, the first course was like a beetroot salad, which I always, I just love beets. And then the second course was um, roasted fennel with uh i think it was a, a sort, of, sort of roast like a baked brie in a, a vegetable stock kind of gravy and then for dessert there was a uh, franconian cheese plate which was really nice except for there was um like fried rosemary and ugh, just felt like i was eating grass clippings so i kind of picked around that but there was like a i'm gonna call it a lingonberry sauce that went with it just because i don't know what kind of berries it was it's probably some sort of regional franconian berry um, but I'm going to say in flavor and texture wise, it's kind of like lingonberries. If you guys have been to Ikea before, um, but that, but that, but that was also really good. So that was really nice. Um, uh, and they had, I had like a Frank, like a regional, uh, farmhouse ale 
I don't think they called it a farm. I forget what they called it, but they were like, yeah, this is a regional beer. It's unfiltered wheat beer, uh, but it's very tasty. I'm like, that sounds perfect. And it tastes like a farmhouse ale. It was really, really good. So that was nice. So some some good food to be had. I do feel like I definitely underplayed like the food aspect while I was there. Just because like I got there and like my body was so confused. Uh, I was just like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I was like, I need, I want to go for a run. And then I was like procrastinating for some reason and eating snacks in my room in the hotel. And I was like, I should have at least sat down at the cafe or the um the brasserie in the um hotel. But I didn't. Instead, I ate like um, go macro bars. It's not like I was eating granola bars and stuff um, for one of my meals because I was just like, my, my body was weird from the travel. So, you know, I got I to like, I think I was a little bit disorganized because this trip was so last minute. So, but I still, I still took advantage of a lot of the, the trip. Fernando Garza Villarreal says, hola, co-fam. Finally able to catch a stream. Well, welcome to you. Uh, and Calvin Wong says, hey, y'all, glad to be back after a week of no live stream. Sub-Zero running is no joke. The condensation that builds inside my jacket freezes, and the shell layer really does become just that. Yeah, that's the trick, Calvin. You got to um, make it so that way uh, you don't sweat. You got to try not to sweat. That means you're going to be cold for the first, like, 10, 20 minutes. You know? So the question is, do you want to be cold at the beginning or at the end? I go both ways. So sometimes I get that layer of sweat that freezes. Uh, Matthias Fenta says, just watched the runners weekend. So dope. Well, thanks so much. I really enjoyed that one, but I was just like, uh, is this, do I really like this video because I was there and I'm reliving the fun memory or is this, I was like, I don't know if this is going to translate. I'm like, I don't, know, I don't know if I got enough good footage, but I'm glad that you guys don't like it. Um, Terry wants to know, is Mike still on EU time? It's 7 PM here. No, I'm, I'm back. I'm pretty much back on, um, Central time, just in time to get thrown off again for going to Tokyo. Um, well, I mean, I got a couple more days. But I got the weekend and then one more day. So, you know, I'm, I debated. I debated like just staying, like either finding a way to stay in Germany or go to Japan early or something like that. And I was just like, I don't, I was like, uh, that's going to be a lot of expense. And I don't, that's a lot of planning that I, I don't, don't have enough time to do. And I was like, I, uh, how do you pack for a trip that's in Germany, which is like an Adidas, and that's going to be an Adidas trip and an ASICS trip to Tokyo? Like I, I was like, uh, I don't have enough luggage. I only have one big suitcase, and it's not that big. So I, I was like, I got to come home. I got, I need, I need a pit stop first. <laughs> All right, let me scroll down to the bottom to catch up with you guys. Um, Jules says, uh, "Hey, Kovan, I'm just stopping to say." I hope everyone is staying safe and doing good during their training blocks or some big races coming up. Oh, that's lovely. That's a great sentiment. Um, I'm, fe I'm feeling good. I had a, a, my last taper kind of longer run. It was 10 miles, so it's not a long run, but my last kind of, I'll have one more session, very, very short session before I hop on the plane uh, to go to Tokyo. But um, yeah, I'm feeling good. Taper's good. I keep thinking like I might be sick, but that's what happens during taper, you know? Um, and let's see. Uh, Lou Klein says, Welcome back, Michael. Hey, co family. Good to see you again, Lou. And Josh Logsdon says, Do you think super shoes will ever get to a point where you'll be able to swap out carbon plates for your desired stiffness? Um, that kind of already exists in a way. Um, Speedland is doing that. It's not a um, racing shoe, at least not a road marathon racing shoe. They make trail shoes. Um, but they have a removable carbon plate. So the idea is you can put it in there or take it out if you want. And they've hinted that like at some point you'd be able to switch different levels of carbon stiffness. Um, but we're, we're not there yet. I suspect, here's my kind of take on it, Josh, is that the way that will go is that you won't have a shoe, one shoe that you can switch out the stuff. Because I just think that in order to make the componentry to do that, you have to add extra bulk. I think what brands would be much more inclined to do is sell you three shoes rather than one shoe that could have one of three plates in it. That's kind of my take. Um, so like, instead of having like a shoe that you could put in like uh, a TPU plate or, and then, or a regular carbon plate or a double thickness carbon plate, you'll have endorphin speed, endorphin pro endorphin elite, or like um, the Adidas Adios, the Takumi Sen 
and the Adios Pro. So I, I think that's kind of what we're seeing instead. Um, and for me, for me, I would prefer that because like you're, you're looking for a racing product. So I don't want when I'm racing to be carrying the weight of the componentry to be able to switch out to maybe a different carbon plate. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of my gut reaction to that. Ted and Ruth wants to know, what was the time difference? Uh, seven hours. So I was like, yeah, I was just always confused. I was always like, am I just tired because I've seen a lot and I'm overstimulated or am I tired because it's middle of the night right now where I'm from? So I don't know. It was it was enough to kind of like make me feel a little bit weird. Um, Dave says, Heiko, what are your thoughts on the new study out that suggests wearing carbon plated shoes increases the risk of bone stress fractures? I haven't seen that. I'm not familiar with it. And I'd really like to see the design, uh, the study design, you know? So like, that's a nice pithy one sentence conclusion, but I really need to be like, is this with trained athletes? Did their mileage increase? What's their lifetime? You know what I mean? I just feel like, like every time I see a study where they like, and, and like, I feel like the way that researchers try to get around it is we looked at 40,000 Strava athletes and compared what they did before to what they did later and to derive this kind of result. And I'm like, I don't know. You can do the same training block. One person can do the same training block twice in a row. And the first time you do the exact same training block, it might just be like your body's kind of a little bit overloaded and hasn't had a chance to absorb, say, increased mileage, going from like 60 miles a week for your training block to 80 miles a week. But that second training block that you do without changing shoes at all, just the same exact program, I think an 80 mile a week, now you can handle that kind of mileage and you'll have a different result. So like you can, it's hard to like, so then when you insert like, oh, well in this race, they use this shoe in this race, they use another. It's hard to say, even if the training plan is exactly the same because the person is different. So like, I, I just think that doing these kinds of studies is very difficult. And I don't know, I would like to see the study. But my understanding is that the studies have so far been inconclusive. So, uh, Frank says the study that Dave mentioned was only a set of 5k studies more like a request for more research than having any real evidence well I mean like it's a start you know I'm not saying that we shouldn't do research on it it's a good question to ask um, but like yeah I mean I think that I'd like to know a lot of it because like you know they do a lot of studies and they try to extrapolate from like cyclists and stuff and um you know, like something that they have to always watch for in cycling tests is like people get good at the exercise. So let's say it's like you're going to like pedal at, you know, FTP for 90 seconds with so many seconds of break and do that multiple times and then see what's the power output and how that changes after a certain kind of training regimen. But like, you automatically get better at doing the test and you can put out more power because you know how to do it. Kind of like the first time you race a 5K, you have no idea how to pace it. The fifth or sixth time you do it, you kind of have an idea. And so that has nothing to do with the training regimen that's applied in the test. You know, so sometimes it can be a little bit conf confusing. And I feel like, hmm, it's hard to kind of study humans. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, mm. All right. Uh, Brandon Palmer has a question related to that. says, just bought my first carbon plated shoes in German Pro 2. I know I shouldn't wear them all the time, but uh, that I do need to wear them before the race. Do I wear them during my speed workouts or an easy? I would say do it during a, a workout. So take them out for a workout. Um, I would say if you've got a workout that either has some long run miles in it or like some uh, marathon effort miles, if that's what you're you know doing to race with them. Or I also like to do them, take them out for like a threshold workout. If you got like mile repeats, something like that, that's a good way to kind of do it. Um, yeah, since it's their first one. So that's kind of, that'll give you kind of a sense of uh, when you can uh, reach for those. All right. Um, let's start opening some of these packages because I just got, I got so many. I don't, I, I don't, I mean, some of the packages I could tell like what they are, like this one a little bit obvious what it is and i do know what's in it because they like 
contacted me and asked me if I wanted one. And I said, yes, I do. So I think I turned the camera a little bit too far today. And now you could see like past the edge of this cabinet. But let's see what I got. The first one is from Tracksmith. It's like, it's like they give it whenever they do this. I think this is just an invoice that comes in here, right? But it looks like uh, I'm about to announce an award winner. And the winner is me. <laughs> uh, we got another Tracksmith Rabbit uh, sticker. And then they included one of these. Is this the No Days Off calendar? Oh, I think it is. I've never gotten one of these before. They've, ne they've never sent me a No Days Off calendar. But here it is. All right, so there's that. But here's a thing that I'm really interested in. It is a gray sweatshirt. It is a hoodie of the Tokyo Marathon. So it's got a, like the little track mid ribbon on the back, um, right between the shoulder blades. It's got uh, ribbing along the bottom and then on the sides as well for some ease of comfort. A little kangaroo pouch up front with the Tracksmith badge. And then this is a very heavyweight hoodie. I like it a lot. It seems big. It doesn't seem like the right size. It says it's a medium. So we'll have to try it. Maybe they changed the head hole size because the ones from last year's Marathon Majors collection, the head hole was so tight, it was hard to get it on. But thank you to Tracksmith for sending this out. They have a different one for like all of the different marathon majors this year. What does that say? 2000? That's that's 2023. Yeah. So this year and then the marathon major. So there's that. Awesome. <laughs> one HP says every time I open one of the awards from Tracksmith, the envelopes, my credit card company is always the winner. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Uh, funny. All right. Uh, let's do um, let's do this one next. I'm just gonna go. Ah, oh boy. I guess we're doing that one next. Oh. I think this one wants to be done next. It like jumped off the table. I just gotta find my pocket knife. Put it. I don't know who sent me this. It's not immediately obvious from the sending address. What is this? There's like styrofoam packaging in here. It's really weird. Oh, what's this? Look at this, guys. I think this might need a, a more fancy unboxing. Yeah, I'll do a quick unboxing and then I'll do like a an unboxing for the camera later. Check this out. Forever Run Nitro from Puma. I was not expecting this. And then it opens up like this. It says fast forever. I hope this is an under embargo. There wasn't a note in here. I feel like if it's under embargo, there just needs to be a note like at the top. And so then here's this, which is photos kind of a little bit strange to me, but and then says, run forever with Forever Run Nitro. Our newest innovation encourages an optimal running motion without compromising the bouncy nitro pop we've come to know and love. We built this to elevate the running experience to help individuals reach that feeling where each step feels springy and effortless. Forever Run Nitro was tested in the lab, confirmed in the wild, and is runner improved. We hope you enjoy. 
and on this side it's a fast forever faster and there's like a little slide out pocket over here oh, what is this oh exercise bands I think maybe because they know that I don't do strength training. They've sent me bands. They'll be like, maybe he'll do this. <laughs> but these are, um, yeah, they're Puma branded exercise bands. There's a little pouch that it goes with. Let's keep that together so I don't lose it. Oh, oh actually was I was actually wanting one of these last night. My hip is really tight from sitting on planes for so long. So it feels like a little cross ball. And it says forever faster right on top. Boom. There we go. Let's take a look at the shoes now. Oh my goodness. Look at this thing. This thing is big. It's a this is a big shoe. Um, but it's light. Got a substantial kind of heel clip back here. Um yeah, look at this upper. Nice big pull tab. And then nitro foam. I think it's just the regular nitro foam, not the nitro elite foam. And then there's something else under here. But it's also soft and squishy. So I thought this might be a plate of some sort. I'll have to look at some more specs on this shoe. It said it's a run guide system here. To help things roll forward. But this looks like a really big, beefy stack. I think I'm going to like this. And then I think this is the one that has like the, yeah, the, the insole was designed by like a special orthopedics company. So interesting. I remember seeing this at TRE. I don't think this is a stability shoes, but I think it's one of those like guide rail systems. Yeah. I gotta tell you, something kind of smells plasticky in here. I think it's, I don't know if it's this box or what, but this is a nice, this is a nice package. I like this. Mm. Hawaii Frank says, hi, Kuzi. I'm watching from the Nuremberg area. Oh, what's going on, man? I was just over there. It was beautiful. It's so much nicer weather-wise over there than it is here. I got to tell you. Yeah, a lot of you guys are giving me a hard time about how I say Puma. Calvin says, is the Brits say Puma? Luis says Puma. Sam Hersey says Puma. Martha says, the bands are really good for hip strength work. I know, I need to do it. You know what I've, want, what I've been wanting some bands for? I, number one, I just got to say, I think that these um, foam inserts that they use to pad the packaging that look like liquor bottles is great. I don't know why, but I just find this really amusing. But the box is full, and there's like a dozen of them in here. Um, but that's funny. Um, but yeah, like one of the things I want to do is kind of like knee, like a knee drive raise exercise. The bands that I have are not the right length for that, and I'd like to be able to just do some like knee drive, knee raises. I don't even know what that's called, but I just feel like my hip is really tight, and so I can't lift my knee up very high that's been my problem i've been trying to figure out doing some exercises like seated like leg lifts and stuff like that like i'll have like let's say this is i'll put like my foam roller up or something and then i'll like lift my legs over them while i'm in the seated position i've been doing that to kind of loosen things up a little bit but yeah hmm. oh hawaii frank says i saw you running along the river pegnets you did i was i was wondering if anyone would say i'm like there's no way anybody knows who i am i'm just a weird american just running around with a selfie stick but everyone's I'm like there's no one here that knows who i am <laughs> um yeah that's awesome um uh, kevin hong says i need to do pistol squats yeah well you know when you stick your leg up for the pistol squat i have a hard time doing that because not because of like the rest of the pistol squat part, I can kind of do not. Sometimes I can do it better than other times, but I think what would make it easier is that part. You know, 
of doing that pistol squat. I can't, I can't do that. Well, I got to do it. I got to work on things. I think I got to, there's work to do. All right, let's move, open this next big box over here. I don't, I, I don't know who sent this one either. So maybe this will be another fun one. Um, Cause I don't know the other two. I know what they are, but the, this one, I don't know. So let's do this one next. Oh, ooh, there's, a, there's a couple of shoes in here. Oh, I know what these are now. All right. So we got a couple of Solomon boxes. They asked me which ones I want. They like sent me like a list. They're like, which ones would you like to try? And I really wanted to try three, but I picked two. Because I kind of got the sense from like the email. They're like, I should pick two. Because they'd like set it up in like two categories of stuff. So like, which shoes would you like to try? So this first one that I picked, you know, I wasn't sure if I should pick it because it's not, I think it's not going to be the kind of Solomon shoe that I love, but I've tested it before and I was wanted to see if maybe I've changed or it has changed. And the first one I picked is the Solomon Senseride 5. It says Senseride 5 right on the side. I think this looks great, but I also, I think I tried the Senseride 3. I also thought the Senseride 3 also looked great but i think there's a new foam now and hopefully i can at least appreciate it for what it is we'll see though so this one's going to be a little bit of a stretch for me it does have ortholite on the inside so hopefully that'll help make things a little bit more comfortable but yeah like this lacing system i always have a hard time with and like this whole like lace garage thing that goes on top of the tongue i'm just seems like a lot of work but it is a really pretty shoe, so I don't know. I think I, I think maybe after Boston, I'm gonna have to plan a trip somewhere where I can really put some of these trail shoes that I've been running in through some paces that are a little bit different than what I normally have available to me here in Crystal Lake. And then the other shoe, this one I'm I'm really excited about. I think I'm gonna like this one. These colors though. Ooh. This is Solomon. What is this? The ult is it the Ultra Glide Two? Aero Glide. Aero Glide. So like like the Ultra Glide, but a road version. So it's got a road outsole, kind of very similar, reminiscent of like what they have on the bottom of the Phantasm, but just a wider shoe. And it's much taller. The foam still feels kind of like really dense. So I'm hoping that this is more kind of like like the kinds of shoes that I tend to like. I think this is the tallest stack height road shoe that Solomon makes. So I'm I'm I have I have high hopes for this one. I really wanna I really want to like this one. So we'll see how that ends up going. Mm. Let's see, Brandon Palmer says, speaking of Solomon, anyone watching Jeff Pelletier's Series running in Georgia. You know, it keeps popping up on my feed. I haven't had a chance to watch that one yet, though. He always makes such really great videos. He's the kind of guy, you watch his videos, and it's like, how is how is there one person making this? Like, I don't understand how he's doing it. Like, the, the kind of footage and the amount of footage that he's getting, it's like, it's got to be a team. There's no way that it's just him doing it out there. He's just doing such a good job. Um... All right. Mm. Frank wants to know, has anyone run in a normal shoe? I have not, but you know who is running in normal now? Did you guys see? Ali Ostrander signed as a normal athlete? That was a surprise. I don't know. Does that mean she's going to start? Does normal make road shoes? Does it mean she's going to, or does this mean she's going to start running racing trails? I feel like I'd love to see her running trails just because she's done so well in the Mount Marathon 5K. Isn't that what it's called? That race in Alaska. And uh, I mean, she's born in, Al I don't know if she was born in Alaska. She was raised in Alaska and she's run all those mountainous regions and stuff like that. So I just would love to see her running mountain trails. It doesn't have to be ultra distance, but that also would be cool. But I don't know. Christina Run says, the series that Jeff is doing is with help from Solomon. Oh, ooh. 
That's interesting. See, I haven't seen the new series, but I remember seeing his, he did the Marath- Marathon de Saab. And um, that one, I feel like he just did that on his own. Right? I don't know. We'll have to, I'll have to go take another look at his stuff. When HP says her reaction video when she signed was really good, really made me happy for Ellie. I know. I mean, I've been rooting for her for a long time. And uh, it's good. I mean, she's been through a lot, it feels like, recently. And I got, I photographed her at the Trials of Miles meet in New York. She was pacing for the steeplechase that day. Um, I didn't get a chance to say hi or talk to her. I don't, and we've never met in person, you know? So I was just kind of like doing my photographer thing and got some photos of her signing her bib, signing bibs for fans, which I'm like, she has a connection with an audience. You know, it was surprising to me that um, she's had a, such a rough go of it um, in the sponsorship space lately. But yeah. Mm. When HP says, there's very few reviews on the Killian Trail Sneaker out there, but he won Hard Rock and six later won UTMB in them. You know, he's also one of those athletes where it's like, I don't know, I feel like you can put him in whatever and he'd still win. So I mean, like, yes, it says a lot about how good the shoe is if Killian likes them. But also at the same time, it's like, I don't know. I feel like he could run fast in anything. I'm like, show me a normal person running in them. Then I'll be more interested. You know, not that I'm not interested, but I also just feel like the kinds of sh- things that Killian would need in a shoe are not the kinds of things that I need in a shoe. So I'm, I just haven't been that interested in the normal brand. But now that Ali Ostrander is an athlete, signed out, a sponsored athlete, I'm like, okay, what is she going to race in? What is she going to train in? Now nah, I'm like, all right. Not that I'm less good as Ali Ostrander, but I'm like, ah, okay, a human. Because like I just feel like Killian is just like on another plane, you know. Mm. Dark Kick says, "Come on, Co. Love the Solomon lacing system in Lace Garage. I I don't know how to use it. I've I've had to like look up YouTube videos. I'm like, well, how do you use this lacing system? Because it just felt like there was all this junk up in the top of the laces, and I was on the in the tongue, and I'm like, this is not comfortable. This can't be right." And I'm like, I usually never feel pressure when I lace up a shoe, but the Solomon Sense Ride 3, when I ran in that shoe, I was like, this is uncomfortable to me. So I don't know. We'll have, we'll have to, I'll have to see. I'll, you know, I, I would like to, I would like to love this shoe. So that's kind of how I feel about Solomon. Um, <laughs> Jody says, uh, put, put Killian in a pair of fair $5 Dunlop volleys and he'd still win any race. Yeah. I don't know what that shoe is, but I'd like to see it. <laughs> uh, Timothy Wright wants to know, hey, Co, do you think the Pegasus Trail 4 GTX would handle dirt and gravel roads? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like that shoe could really run on roads, too. Um, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you could. It's not the best thing for it. It would wear down the shoe faster. You know, so it's kind of like you're throwing, burning your own money in that sense. But I think that like um, for dirt and gravel roads, like especially runnable stuff, it's going to be real nice too. Dark Kick says, he's trying to help me out. Dark Kick's trying to help me out with the lacing system on the sense ride. You roll it back like a burrito and tuck it in. I know, but then it makes the tongue all puffy. And I just don't like it when the tongue is puffy on top. It just feels like a big floppy ear when the tongue sticks out too far. So I'm like, that can't be right. It's making it look goofy. I don't understand. So, you know, I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll try it. Um, Carrie Smith says, hey, how are you getting along in the Invincibles, Mike? You know what? That shoe still is kind of baffling me. So I took it out today because I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know what? Ben Johnson loves this shoe. What, what is he doing? What is he doing in it that he loves in it? And I, um, I remember... I was on a, I think it was with Rambling Runner. I was on a, like a multi-person panel one time, virtually with Ben Johnson. And we had to pick a non-plated shoe that we would race a marathon in. And he picked the Invincible. And I was like, you'd pick the what? And he's like, yeah, I like running fast in it. I'm like, well, you like running fast in it, but you're fast. 
So like, it's fine for you. You can run fast on anything probably. Cause the dude does actually, he says he likes the turbo nature and uh, also the alpha fly nature. So I'm like, yeah, you can run in anything. So, but I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll try running faster in the Invincible because I was having a hard time with it. It's just, it's like two different, it's like a mullet shoe. There's like one shoe in the back and then another shoe in the front and they don't feel connected or whatever. So I've just been trying to avoid the heel. So I'll, uh, let's try uh, running faster in it. So today I took it out for a long run, a taper workout. And so, you know, my normal threshold workout is six times six minutes at threshold pace with a minute recovery. For a, to adapt it for a taper workout, I did six times six minutes at marathon effort with 90 second recovery jogging. And I actually didn't, I, I thought it did really well. I was able to get to marathon pace fast, like quickly and, and just stay there nice and easy. But that two shoe nature of it, like it's like really tall in the back. And then there's like a shelf, there's like a drop off a sharp point at the heel at the, at the arch. And it drops off into a different shoe in the forefoot. And um, that part was like poking my arch. My right foot arch, I think, is lower than my left foot. I think I have like a medium arch in my right foot and then a high arch in my left. So I didn't notice it in my left foot. But in my right foot, I noticed it. And it started poking my arch. Even though the shoe did it really well at marathon effort, um, my, my right foot started to get numb towards the end when I was running fast in it. And then back to easy paces, it's just, again, it's like, clop 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 every time i'm running easy like i'm hitting the heel and then slapping the forefoot but if i just stay on the forefoot then i like like the shoe so like i wish they would just like smooth it out shave off a couple of millimeters off of the heel or maybe give me some more in the forefoot um but i actually kind of like it like this shoe a lot i'm liking it like the super blast where i like it at easy plus to marathon effort but not faster maybe not threshold but like at marathon effort it's real nice so that's kind of where i am on it so far on it so i've got like 30 miles in the shoe now maybe 25 miles in the shoe running it three times four times so i think that's kind of where i'm going to end up landing on it it's kind of i think i read it wrong the first time i thought it was supposed to be this super comfortable max cushion shoe and that's not what it is it doesn't like that i didn't think that's what it wanted to be the first time and so i'm thinking it's more of like a easy moderate shoe long run work like a unplated workout shoe that has a lot of junk in the trunk for no real reason so i don't know i think that's i think it's like a super blast i think they're they're pretty like i feel like it's not here, but Super Blast, SC Trainer, and Invincible. Those are all the same kind of shoe, kind of. You know, that's kind of, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at on it. Um, Travis is color. <laughs> the color says, um, LOL, every shoe Ben Johnson wears is a speed shoe. That, well, yeah, because he's he runs in everything fast. <laughs> um, and what HP says, Robbie says he could get his right foot to stay in the couldn't get his right foot to stay in the heel of the invincible three i don't i think yeah i think it's uh i'm not getting a lot of good lockdown on it and so that's kind of part of what makes me slide. i think not feel like it's a great speed shoe but i don't know i think it's kind of like yeah when hb says like he had similar arch pain in his you know like i've had like arch issues and nike shoes before a lot of pegasus are that way in my right foot and it usually goes away because Kushlan kind of molds to your foot kind of quickly. Um, with React, it take it doesn't it takes a lot longer. With the Zoomax, I don't know if it'll happen at all. I don't know. So yeah, it's um I don't know if that means I like the Invincible Three or not. It's still so quirky, and but I think like. It's a good law. I think it's a good unplated long run shoe. You know, Eric Raj says, what's the best place for super blast in a rotation tempo faster long runs. I've been the best threes for easy recovery runs and magic speed for threshold or interval paces. Yeah. Then I would put the, um, the super blast for a long run with mar I, for me, super blast is squarely like marathon effort, easy plus. So I guess what people, most people, a lot of people call tempo to marathon effort. Like that's kind of where I like it. Once we get to threshold, you know, I'd rather, you know, magic speed two, not magic speed one, not 
that one, Magic Speed 1, but Magic Speed 2, which is not on the wall yet. Um, but Magic Speed 2, and then Nova Blast 3 for easy. So that's kind of how I would look at that. And then racing, or your threshold, can also be your race shoe, the Meta Speed Sky Plus, which is what I like. So Luke Klein wants to know, what am I going to wear in Tokyo? I'm going to wear the Meta Speed Sky Plus. I have a green pair. I got that new green color. Uh, the green faded to blue. It's just really weird color. I'm like, I guess it's springy. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, but, it, you know, it looks okay. Um, but I don't know. I've been told that there might be a Tokyo colorway. So I'll be bringing the green. I'm possibly racing in that. But I'm fingers crossed for a Tokyo surprise. You know? Hmm. Al Davino says, welcome back, Co. I was thinking of a cool weekly segment with the shoes in the background. Timeline Tuesday, where you can highlight a shoe from the past, best or worst, that you grab off the shelf. Oh, I like that idea. Maybe we'll do that. Like next time when I'm like bored, I'm like, uh, what am I going to talk about today? Like, let's talk about uh, this. A trail you trail. I've been running also in the um, Atreyu Daily Trainer. I thought the Atreyu Trail was a good daily trainer even though it's meant for trails, it's kind of like how like the Nova Last 3 trail, which Blas Ikazo was also talking about. So ever since I got, he says, hey everyone, ever since I got the Nova Blast 3 trail, I can't get enough of it. Could run slow forever in them. Thought that'd be way too soft, but not at all. Yeah. And you're, I'm thinking you're talking about running on roads with it. That's kind of how I feel about the Atreyu trail. But I feel like the Atreyu Daily Trainer does an even better job of doing that. So, was that was that fun? I think I like I I, I don't know I like I, I like I like looking back on old shoes and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, Jody wants to know if I watched the World Cross of Champs in Bathurst. Didn't realize how exciting it'd be. I didn't get to watch any of that. I don't know. I think I have it. I think I have it set to record. So it might be in the DVR, but I haven't seen it yet. So I don't know. Travis McCullough says, so I don't know if anyone has asked about this, but what if Nike and Adidas collaborated to make a super elite racing shoe? Have you ever thought it would be like? They would never do that. That's just never going to happen. Yeah. So we, we don't even have to hypothesize because that's just ne never going to happen. All right. Uh, let's open two more packages. So uh, let's do this one next. So we got that one here. I have a feeling I know what this one is. I can tell from the sender's address what brand it is. And I think I know what shoe they're sending me. So I got two more shoes to go over before I'm done for the day. And I gotta get, get through them quickly because I have an appointment. I'm going to be doing a collab video with Ultra Trail Steven. And we're getting on a call in a couple minutes. So this is the Reebok, Reebok Float Ride Energy 5. Ooh, these are very loud colors. What is this, like a teal, guys? For Let's explain it for everyone that's listening. I think this is like a teal, kind of like a Seattle Seahawks color. And then it's got like a mint. What is that? Like, it's always that, that limey green color that I think looks like yellow. But maybe this, maybe it is yellow. I don't know. And then on the inside, it's just like, whoo, bright orange, a very orange, like a little bit of a reddish orange, but orangey orange. This time, I feel like the Float Red Energy feels maybe a little bit softer when you're two in the squeeze in the Charmin test. But the thing that's really interesting to me and I'm very curious about. I didn't think that the float red energy needed any more stability, but they've put a plastic plate. I thought it was supposed to be plastic. It feels kind of like rubber. Maybe there's rubber on the outside part of it, but underneath you can see there's like another like teal color in there. Think like a plastic, kind of like a LEP that Adidas uses, um, but kind of like a way, kind of like a, a little shank in the midfoot. I don't know if it's more for torsion or for rolling forward. So I don't know if it's like a truss system, like in the old ASIC shoes, 
or a Mizuno wave plate kind of thing, but they've got something in the middle of the foot. Uh, and then uh, I think I think this is a bigger cutout in the in in the midsole midsole foam here. Also feels like it's a little bit wider than the fuller and energy has been. So otherwise it looks pretty similar in terms of the outsole pattern. Some changes, of course, because of this new plate that's in the middle. But um, upper seems to be pretty similar, a familiar silhouette. Although some of these things, parts here are like really, I could see through them, or at least a lot of lights coming through. So maybe more breathable. Colors are pretty wild. Tongue is lightly padded, not too much, but a little bit of a TPU cap on the front. And then pretty flexible in the, in the back. Oh, it's pretty rigid this way, but you could squeeze it. So look, there we go. Martha says, it's too light to be a navy, too light a blue to be a navy, but not enough green for it to be a teal. Okay. Uh, Calvin says, uh, silhouette is decent, but the colorway is not. Martha thinks that the color is more of a slate blue. Oh, I like that. I like slate blue. Um, a variety of opinions on it, though. Eliza says, I like those colors. Uh, Carrie says, it's kind of ugly, though. Frank also thinks it's kind of ugly. Lou thinks it's kind of looks like a nice daily. Yeah, I think that it looks like a float ride, which I think is good for Reebok because that's like that, like consistency is something that they're going for. I mean, if they want it for things to look different and be very different from year to year, they would have been, but it's been pretty consistent from like one through four for this shoe. So there it is. But there's some changes under the hood. So we'll see how that ends up being. I'm like running out of space to put all this stuff. I got one more box in here. Um, New Betra says, sorry, I'm late. Did Co tell us what he was in Germany for? Was it the light boost, ultra boost? I was not there for ultra boost light. I did not test that shoe. Um, my like contact person was wearing them like all weekend long. And I was like, you, I was like, what are those? You're not wearing embargoed shoes, are you? He's like, actually, they're not technically supposed to be photographed until Friday. I'm like, till like Thursday. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. My my video will come out Friday. So I was like, so I'll I'll film you in your shoes. But that's not the one that I went for. Mm. All right. Last package for today, and that's gonna be it. Oh, and then I gotta get going because I gotta meet with Steven. This one, I also know what it is based on like the sent or the sender's address that's on here. Oh my goodness, guys. I did not eat um, when I came back from my run because I like my day was running late. I was a little bit late starting the live stream and then I hopped right on to live stream. So I did not eat. Instead, I just had a cup of coffee. And right now I'm jittery. Like my hands are shaking because of all the coffee. Actually, they're pretty steady. Oh, they're, no, it's, it's jittery from all the coffee. All right. This last one is a shoe brand that I've never tried before. Topo. So they were in contact with me a while ago, um, very shortly after TRE. And they're like, we'd love to get you in one of these shoes. And I was like, I would love to try one of these shoes. And they're like, but we don't have any send right now. As soon as we do, we'll get you some, we'll get you a pair. So this is the Topo Cyclone 2. Yeah. In blue, blue slash aqua. Which part is the blue and which is the aqua? Because there's like a blue main part and then there's a toe cap kind of like in a uh, Rebel version 2 kind of stripe. Is that the aqua? It's supposed to be like sea green. But it's lighter than it looks. It's a, it's a big looking shoe. Um, but it's p powered. So p uh midsole. Very thin outsole rubber. Really thin. Just a couple of uh, maybe like this looks like a two millimeter outsole, not even, but not as much much in here in terms of like what's going to make it grippy. There's a couple of like little like micro things in there to make it look grippy. Let's see if we can get focus on it. No, the camera doesn't want to focus on it. Mm. There we go. Then it says topo. It's like uh, embedded, embossed in there, but not a lot for in terms of grippiness, but you know, this is supposed to be a workout shoe a racing shoe. Got a really aggressive heel flare back here. 
some padding on the outside of the shoe, which is, feels a little confusing. But it looks like it's spacious in here. And lighter than it looks. So excited to try that one out. All right. That's it for the packages for today. Mm. Yeah, Louis says, oh, Topo, I've always wanted to try the Sandy Sponsor shoe. Yeah, I've been, I mean, I the first time I heard about them was through Sandy Night Paper. And um, because of that, I always wanted to give them a try. I just never got around to it. And I always feel like, I mean, I haven't tried the shoe yet. So maybe I'll, my opinion will change after I try the shoe. But I always felt like Ultra should buy Topo. And that way, because like Ultra always says that they're a balanced cushioning shoe, that they're always zero drop. But I feel like they got to move on past that. And they should have some four millimeter drop shoes. You know? Yeah. Jody says, is Topo the shoe that is about four millimeter stack height that is perfect transition from zero drop shoes? That's what a lot of people say. I don't think I need the transition. I've never needed it, but some people do. And I feel like Ultra should have that as an option. But anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to trying this Topo shoe. Mm. Adam says the Cyclone is 6.5 ounces. Yeah, it is very light. Uh, and Martha says it's the, the toe cap that is the Aqua. Sanjay Cohenberg also says, the top is blue, the front is aqua. All right. Um, Jody says, did you have a beer in Germany and was it better than U.S. beer? Um, I had beer in Germany and they tasted like Hefeweizens. They tasted like wheat beers. So I felt like there wasn't anything that was like, oh my goodness, this is so different. Because I feel like I've had those style of beers before. But it's also just really nice to have a beer in a German beer in Germany with the pretzel. That was really nice. That's hard to beat, you know. So it was it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. Really good. Mm. All right. Let's see. Um, Adam says, "Did you talk about Ali signing with normal?" We did. We ju you just missed it, Adam. But we were talking about it, and I was saying that like. I think that Ali signing with normal makes me a little bit more interested in the normal brand. Cause like Killian, you know, starting the brand and all that is interesting, but I'm not like, you know, his core fan base kind of person. So it's like, Oh, that's great. Good for him. I'm curious to see what this brand does. But now that they're like, Oh, I didn't, I didn't think that they would be signing athletes for some reason. And it just was a surprise. So I think it's interesting. I hope it both means that like Ali's going to do some trail races. I don't think that she necessarily needs to do ultra trail races if that's not her thing, but I'm interested to see if she'll do some ultra races. All right, guys, my phone alarm just came off or went off. So that means I got to um, get going. That was my reminder to myself. So um, that's going to be it for today. Uh, we will do another live stream on Monday and that'll be like the last one uh, for a while because then I'm going to go to Tokyo on Tuesday morning very early, so there will be no live streams for at least a week after that. So uh, good to see you guys today. We'll do one more live stream. Uh, Monday's video, I don't know what it's going to be. I have to look at the schedule, see what's... I'm kind of still all discombobulated, but there'll be a video Monday morning, and then we'll do a live stream. So hopefully I see you then. In the meantime, enjoy your lot long runs over the weekend, and be safe out there, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>